Because the next panel is we're going to be looking at how data from the crowd and sort of bottom-up approaches can help build more intelligent cities. And to discuss this, I'm joined by Wim Elfrink, who's the Chief Globalization Officer at Cisco, and by Zia Yusuf, uh, who's the CEO of Streetline, uh, and they do a smart parking app, among other things. So welcome to Hi. both of you. Hi, Tom. Thank you. 50 billion devices will be connected in the next decade, which will uh, enable all kinds of new services. Wouldn't it be great now, and that's the next phase, and this is all data, big data, but can you, how can you unleash that as open data and also make it available to your citizens? And you can do that, uh, of course, in, in a monetization fashion. And, and by that, uh, you not just create a smart city from an infrastructure point of view, but you create an experience. So how can you build an infrastructure in your city to make your city more competitive? For most city planners, technology is still an afterthought. If you look at city plans, uh, that it, it's about architecture, iconic buildings, uh, it is still very much in a physical world. Basically, you build a city to go to work. Um, you have your bike lanes everywhere. We have to. So the broadband the, infrastructure is the new, the new bike lane, it, as it were. It's the fourth utility. That's the way we... And so it, it, it will unleash... It, it's not a goal in itself, but it will enable productivity, uh, competitiveness, will attract young people. The city, I think, government will have more and more the role of the facilitator. Uh, it will all be about public-private partnerships, about meshing up public services with triple play, for instance, uh, that, that, that what right. you see in your television but also a whole new array of um, what we call non-regulatory services. Uh, an example, you know, that the uh, average guy in Paris uh, spends four years of his life finding a parking place. You know, <laughs> when I drove in here to San Francisco at, at 15 minutes, I would pay $10, $15 a month well, we to, have, to, 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 get, to get a parking place. We have just the man to, to, uh, to talk about parking. <laughs> I'd like to bring Zia Yusuf sure. in uh, as a specific example. So let's, let's get down into the weeds of this parking. You have solved a particular problem, which is how to find a parking space. Um, where is it active? Uh, how many uh, uh, so areas LA, is this active in LA, moment? parts of New York. Uh, we've done some stuff originally in San Francisco, Indianapolis, the DC metro system. Uh, University of Maryland, Boston University, those places are like small towns as well. Right. And how, how does the system, so it works as an app called Parker, and you say, I need a parking space here, and it tells you where there is one. Um, how, does it, how does it actually tell whether there's a space? Sure. I mean, it's similar to what Wim said on, on the infrastructure side. I mean, we, we talk a lot about big data. We don't spend enough time talking about new data and new sources of data. And, and that's what the sensors do. Um, so you have put sensors, you personally, so or the we, city puts them? Uh, Who puts them? Me personally, yes, a couple. Okay. Uh, but uh, Siemens does all of our deployments now. So we go put a sensor in each parking spot. Yep. Uh, the sensor senses a car through a magnetometer and a light sensor. Those are the, those yep. are the detection mechanisms. Uh, and then we lay out a mesh network. So other than the smart grid guys and so on, we're pretty much the only ones laying out mesh networks in cities today. Right. And the parking ROI, believe it or not, pays for that. Uh, parking is typically the second or third largest source of revenue in a city. Uh, it's, it's a real estate play. Uh, LA on Monday morning, for the first time in their history, uh, changed parking rates across the city, dynamic pricing. At 610, all those new rates were in our Parker app. All right. right? So this is, uh, parking for a city is a real estate play. It's, it's a 20 foot by five foot piece of real estate that isn't allocated appropriately. But it's also a piece of the smart city jigsaw that actually makes money. It, 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 it does, because we look at the economics of a parking spot, right? I mean, there's two ways to, to drive money from a parking spot. Either the money that you pay in the revenue, or unfortunately, when you get a ticket. Um, and so we can work on, on both angles of that. Everything has a yin and a yang. So, so that data, we get two pieces of data. We get the occupancy information of the car and we get the associated payment information. Right. That information then either goes to a city, and we have a series of web and mobile apps with you know, IBM and Cognos and so on, or it goes to your, uh, to your mobile phone. 
uh, within a minute, minute and a half, it will tell you where the open parking spots are on the and street. Does it then reserve it for you, or do you just have to get there very quickly? You can't, well, uh, the way we do it is, is today we put the blocks into three categories, less than two, two plus, and four plus. Right. Uh, even though we know the status of a specific spot, we'll never send you to that. Because, I mean, real life. Oh, okay. So you'll say there's four spots on this street. Correct. Right. But most people waste time, or you sit there and have arguments with your spouse. You know, take a left, no, take a right, there's parking <laughs> over there. Yeah, so, especially in this so city. So not only smart <laughs> cities, but we help marriages as well. And, um, <laughs> and so, <laughs> so if you know that there's less than two spots when you take a left, maybe you'll find one, right. but highly unlikely. Take a right where it says two plus or four plus, you're guaranteed to find parking. And then okay. there's mobile payments, there's all kinds of other things okay. that you can have. So this is great because it's an actual example that's actually deployed and it's not theory and it's not a PowerPoint. Um, this is new, right? right? right. I mean, it's, it's, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's not like I grew up saying I want to be in parking business. This is, but there's been this explosion of, of energy and effort around this topic. Uh, for us, it's not about the sensors. It's about sensing the real world. Right. It could be through sensors in Europe. It could be through video. Uh, ultimately, you'll you don't sense care as long as you get that information. Yeah, right today, back. we have the best sensors in the market. They're the cheapest. You know, we deploy them very quickly. On the city side of it, right. they're looking at the economics and the efficiency related to this. 30% of the traffic in a city is caused by people looking for parking. It's a massive number. Right? Most people have spent their entire life looking at traffic. It takes you 22 minutes to get from point A to point B. But if that point B, as Wim said earlier, is outside this Masconi Center, yeah. So what? That's not your destination. Your ultimate destination is point C when you've actually parked your car. Yeah. Today, IBM, very proud of this, IBM, Siemens, and Xerox, all three resell our solutions, where their core uh, parking kind of solution, if you will. And as of two weeks ago, very interestingly, Citibank uh, you know, gave us a $25 million debt facility, uh, and they're now selling this solution, believe it or not. And their engagement is with the CFOs and the treasures of cities. Right, so they're going in that way. They're, and they're not selling a big bundle of smart, they're not saying buy lots of sensors, buy lots of routers, whatever. They're, they're, they're just saying, They're going to the, the CFO parking saying problem. the parking revenue is the second or third largest source of <clears throat> revenue in your city. <clears throat> we now have a solution where we can optimize that revenue at a lower cost, <clears throat> reduce congestion, and by the way, on top of all that, we can help consumers find a parking spot from 15 minutes to two minutes. Do you have other things that you plan to do, um, other problems? And this was sort of the first one you bit, yeah, so, you bit so, off. So, so that's an interesting point. So at, at this point, we've extended from on-street sensor-enabled parking to also garages. Yeah. So we've built a whole suite of, of SaaS applications that helps garages optimize their parking. Right. Because that, again, is a yield management issue. But the infrastructure that is laid out in cities can be used for multiple things. So we lay out a mesh infrastructure. Uh, the sensing device is one piece of it. The other is how do you get the damn data out? So we can put other sensing devices underneath that mesh network. We can put pollution sensors. We can put sensors in fire hydrants to give you uh, real-time information on water pressure. We can put sensors in, in, in light poles. But, but it's important to sense the real world. And I think that's the exciting part. You sense the real world. You generate new types of data, and you, especially when you connect it to mobility, right? I mean, it's, it's the in-context piece of this. I mean, can you use this for things like car sharing and, and that sort of stuff? Yeah, so well? we're in, in multiple discussions of bringing this information into in-car navigation. I mean, today we have an have a, uh, Android and an iPhone app. This data belongs in your car. So you will put in your GPS address. As you get closer to your de uh, uh, destination, uh, up will light up the spots on the streets that are available. It will give you the uh, spaces available in a garage with the prices. You can reserve a spot in a garage as you get closer to San Francisco. Right. You press pay and you're done. Mm. That's not the future. That's today. Uh, and, uh, and, and we're out to reinvent and rethink parking. And there's many other verticals or micro verticals in a city that can, use that can be reinvented right. by, by kind of this combination of smart apps and the sensors. So, so I think if you can connect the sensor-based data to the human data, to the official data that the city puts out, schedules and this, that, and the I, I think you can radically change how people work and live. Yeah, yeah, in Shanghai, when yeah. you buy a car, you have to first prove that you have access to a parking spot. <laughs> yeah, Hong Kong. <laughs> in Delhi, they had riots, uh, I think it was about two months ago. Uh, the sheer number of cars, it doesn't matter whether it's an electric vehicle, car, or anything right. else, they have to park somewhere. And as you have, you know, 50-story buildings and, and apartments, there's no space to park. We can't help on that. But it's, it's those kinds of things that will choke cities 
we cannot build more roads, we cannot build more parking spots, we cannot build more infrastructure. We have to reallocate it and consume it intelligently. That requires information, that requires data. And that's how those pieces, I think, come together. Right, I think we're going to have to leave it there because this red light has started to flash. But um, Wim, Elfric, and uh, Azia Yusuf, thank you both very much indeed. Thank, thank you. you. It's a pleasure. Thank you.